coming in March from the VLGA is the first 2024 session in the highly regarded Fast Track series, looking at the critical issue of leading under pressure. Fast Track is targeted professional development for mayors and councillors, dealing with the topical and timely issues of our time. Speakers and registration details will be announced soon. Get ready to fast track your way to the 2024 elections with the VLGA. City here coming to you from the land of the Wadawurrung people with the latest from the local government news roundup. On the podcast today, anger as Victoria refuses fast-tracked federal disaster funding. A new councillor elected in Greater Geelong while a long-standing North East councillor resigns. A council rejects a call for a municipal monitor. Mixed reaction from councils to preliminary flight paths for the new Western Sydney airport. A Tasmanian mayor launches three court proceedings to overturn adverse conduct findings. A call for an entire WA council to resign. While in Canada, an entire council does step down. And there's much more ahead in your weekend update from the Local Government News Roundup. Thanks for joining me for the Roundup wherever you're listening from, be it around Australia or around the world. Our program is brought to you by the Victorian Local Governance Association. And here are some of the Victorian Council-related stories making news in recent days. The Municipal Association of Victoria has reacted with anger to a Victorian government decision to refuse fast-tracking of disaster funding from the federal government. The announcement yesterday that $1.8 billion in funding will be brought forward for most states has been welcomed by the national peak body, ALGA, as a response to calls for faster support and payments following unprecedented natural disasters in recent years. However, the news has soured for Victoria, with the MAV describing the state's refusal to bring the funding forward as a cruel twist. MAV President David Clark said in a statement that he was straight out angry and that denying councils and affected communities the money is completely unacceptable. According to a Herald Sun report, the Andrews government is insisting the cash advance will not change the speed that support is distributed and is demanding a simpler funding process from the federal government. The City of Melbourne has unveiled a plan to build a new precinct around the Queen Victoria market worth an estimated $1.7 billion in investment. Three new towers will overlook Flagstaff Gardens, the market and the CBD, and hundreds of apartments are planned along with a 1.8 hectare People's Park. The ABC reports the development will be known as Garrawa Place and is expected to generate over a billion dollars in economic activity and create more than 4,000 jobs. If approved, work is expected to commence next year with the project to be delivered in stages over five years. Sarah Hathway has been elected as a councillor for Windermere Ward in Greater Geelong City Council after the VEC conducted a countback of votes from the October 2020 general election. The vacancy on Greater Geelong Council occurred after the recent resignation of Councillor Kylie Grisbeck. The election result was declared on Wednesday afternoon and Ms Hathway was sworn into office later that day. Meanwhile, the city's contentious budget has been approved with additional funding to maintain library hours. According to the Geelong Independent, only one councillor voted against the adoption of the budget. GRLC Board Chair Liz Patterson confirmed that the organisation would be looking for savings to deal with a shortfall of $406,000 in funding next financial year. And there's more controversy with the Geelong Advertiser reporting that the council has withdrawn advertising from the newspaper. The paper has suggested the decision is related to its recent coverage of community outrage over its draft budget and an expose on staff morale and personnel departures. The council's acting CEO, David Greaves, said the decision came from a review of operational expenditure and that the advertiser would be used for advertising on a discretionary basis. Its weekly full-page City News advertisement will stop from this month. The Geelong Advertiser's relentless coverage of municipal matters continues in its 1st of July edition with at least three major stories looking at revelations about a failed finance system, what the Minister for Local Government has said about the potential to remove councillors and profiles of the people quote-unquote pulling the strings at the council, including the municipal monitors and senior executives. 
There's been another councillor resignation this week. Larry Goldsworthy has stepped down at Indigo Shire Council with immediate effect. The former mayor was first elected in 2008 for a single term and returned for two further terms from 2016 and 2020. Mayor Sophie Price paid tribute to Councillor Goldsworthy for his commitment and dedication to improving the livability of the Shire. His resignation triggers the 44th extraordinary election process of the current council term in Victoria. A no-confidence motion brought by a Queenscliff councillor has been rejected by the council in a vote at Wednesday night's council meeting. Councillor Donny Grigar submitted the motion raising residents' concerns about a number of issues and calling for the appointment of a municipal monitor. Mayor Isabel Tolhurst described the motion as a distraction but has offered to meet with residents about their concerns. She said the council has not had significant failures in governance that would usually warrant the appointment of a monitor. Melbourne's Merribeck municipality has been declared by the council to be a nuclear-free zone. The declaration means the council opposes the storage and transportation of nuclear-related materials in Merribeck and is against the establishment of nuclear facilities or nuclear submarine repair facilities. The council will display signages at municipality entrances declaring its nuclear-free position. It's one of 43 Australian councils to support the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Victoria's Auditor-General has chosen five councils for an assessment of the management of financial resources and their continued financial sustainability. Vago is concerned that councils have consistently underspent and carried forward capital budgets by nearly $3.8 billion over the past five years. It says the consistent underspend has been compounded by inflation and the pandemic, but it also reflects issues with project delivery, budgeting and forecasting. Monash, Cardinia, East Gippsland, Greater Shepparton and Yarra City will be examined as part of the engagement. Some Victorian news briefs for you. A delegation of representatives from Melbourne's West has met with ministers, MPs and the opposition leader to promote collaboration opportunities. The Lead West Councillor Group highlighted priorities for the region, including the Outer Metropolitan Ring, Melbourne Airport Rail and the Hobsons Bay Wetlands. More than 400 young people participated in the inaugural Golden Plains Careers Expo last weekend. The one-day event organised by Golden Plains Shire Council showcased education and training pathways and career opportunities from 30 exhibitors, including universities, TAFEs, local industry and employers. A sunrise to sunset cat curfew has now commenced in Hepburnshire, requiring owners to keep their cats securely confined within their property boundaries during those hours. The council is encouraging the reporting of breaches of the curfew through its customer service channels. And at Yarra City Council, a 7pm to 7am cat curfew is under consideration as part of a review of its domestic animal management plan. Consultation on the curfew and other proposed changes is being invited until the 7th of August. And Yarra Rangers Shire will reopen its public gallery at council meetings from the 11th of July. The temporary ban was put in place in April in response to consistent verbal abuse and antisocial behaviour by some members of the community. The National Roundup is just ahead. I just did want to give a quick plug for the LG Pro Victoria and Council of Capital City Lord Mayors event that's coming up, the National Local Government Community of Practice on Housing and Homelessness. The two-day event in August at the Melbourne Town Hall will coincide with National Homelessness Week. It's designed for local government professionals who are passionate about tackling housing and homelessness issues in their communities. You can find out more and register via the event bright link that you'll find in the show notes. You're listening to the Local Government News Roundup with Chris Eddy. Now, a selection of stories making news in local government circles across the country this week, starting in New South Wales, where the announcement of preliminary flight paths for the new Western Sydney International Airport has received a mixed response from councils. Blacktown and Blue Mountains have been quick to raise concerns, while the announcement has been welcomed by Penrith Council. Blacktown Mayor Tony Bleasdale said the council holds significant concerns, particularly around protecting residents from noise. He said he was concerned that only one public consultation would be offered for residents to engage with the process. 
Blue Mountains Mayor Mark Greenhill said he would fight the proposed flight paths, describing it as a massive concern for the community and the environment. He said the flight paths show a complete disregard for the people of the Blue Mountains and are a clear threat to quality of life in the area. At Penrith, Mayor Tricia Hitchin said the community was excited by the announcement as it brings the opening of the new airport one step closer. She's welcomed the investment in infrastructure and jobs and is looking forward to the release of the environmental impact statement to which the council would be making a submission. Construction for the new airport at Badgerys Creek has been underway for some time and is reported to be more than 50% complete. It will have the capacity for up to 10 million passengers by 2033 and will not have a curfew, meaning flights can operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. A former Liverpool councillor has been charged with breaches of electoral rules, allegedly producing fake pamphlets with negative claims against the wife of the city's mayor. The Daily Telegraph reports that Peter Rostevsky did not appear in court when the case was mentioned. It's alleged that he distributed election material without legibly showing the name and address of the authorising individual or naming the printer and the address at which it was printed. A plea of not guilty was entered on behalf of Mr Rostevsky and the matter was adjourned until mid-August. A councillor at Kiama is pushing for the number of councillors to be reduced from the election cycle commencing in 2028. Councillor Mark Croxford is proposing a reduction of two elected members from nine to seven, but it's not something the council can decide on its own. Media reports have confirmed that if the motion is endorsed by the council at its meeting in August, a referendum of residents and ratepayers would be required to support the proposal. Assuming that is achieved, it would then need to be approved by the local government minister. In Tasmania, a mayor is seeking to overturn adverse findings against him through proceedings in both the Launceston Magistrates Court and the Hobart Supreme Court. The Mercury has the story on Dorset Mayor Greg Howard's two administrative appeals in Launceston and a separate case in Hobart challenging findings of the state's Councillor Code of Conduct panel. The different court proceedings are challenging the findings on different legal grounds. He told the newspaper that his appeals were a matter of principle and that he was fighting a case for every councillor in Tasmania. The alderman who lost her seat on Glenorchy Council for missing three consecutive council meetings has hit out at the council, describing the decision as cruel and unbelievable. The council announced earlier this week that Alderman Kelly Sims's position on the council was vacated due to the rules prescribed under the Local Government Act. According to the Mercury, Ms Sims claims she had requested leave following the death of her mother and that the council had denied her request in a closed meeting. She said she'd heard the news of her removal via the media. Earlier this year, Ms Sims was found guilty by a magistrate of leaking a confidential report, a ruling that she is appealing to the Supreme Court. Across to Western Australia, where residents of the town of Victoria Park have expressed their dissatisfaction with the local council, passing a motion at an electors' meeting calling for the immediate resignation of all councillors. The local ratepayers' association claims that a series of major decisions made by the council lacked transparency and have negatively impacted ratepayers. They say councillors prioritise the interests of the staff over the ratepayers, alleging that decisions are made behind closed doors without accountability or transparency. In a WA Today report, Mayor Karen Vernon has defended the council's decisions as having been made in accordance with the Local Government Act and legal advice. She emphasised that the motion only represented a small fraction of the town's electors and that the council had received positive feedback from residents and businesses. The motion of no confidence will be presented at an upcoming council meeting, but it should be noted there's no provision in the Local Government Act to remove elected members through such a motion. Perth Now has the story on how the town of Cambridge is sticking with plans for a majority in-person election in October, resisting criticism of the decision from some councillors, ratepayers and the former local government minister John Carey. Last month, Minister Carey described the decision made without consultation as an absolute disgrace. New Minister David Michael is reportedly looking at further reforms to prevent the situation arising in the future, saying in-person elections make it harder for ratepayers to vote. The Mayor of Port Hedland, Peter Carter, is suing his predecessor, Camillo Blanco, for defamation, according to a story in WA Today. The lawsuit stems from statements made by Blanco during a council meeting in May, which were later circulated in a 14-minute video on social media. 
Blanco had questioned Carter's knowledge of a Ponzi scheme and alleged that the council edited the meeting recording to suppress his questions. Carter is seeking damages, including aggravated damages and a court order to have the video deleted. And in South Australia, Mount Gambier City Council will develop a policy to reaffirm its apolitical stance after a councillor raised concerns about a testimonial provided for a political candidate. Mayor Lynette Martin reportedly wrote the testimonial for Liberal MP Tony Passon seeking pre-selection for the seat of Barker. A report from the Border Watch describes how Councillor Jason Virgo made two attempts to bring a motion before the Council, leading to an agreement to have a policy developed to establish a formal position on such matters. In the National Briefs, green organics bins are becoming part of the standard curbside collection service from this month on the Gold Coast. Over 75,000 bins are being delivered to freestanding houses across the city between July and September and everyone with a green organic service will have the fee rebated during the 2023-24 financial year. The city of Burnside in South Australia flew its Civic Centre flags at half-mast on Friday as a mark of mourning and respect for a former staff member who recently passed away. Gary Thompson retired last year from the city's technical services and operations group after four decades at the city. And in the NT, the East Arnhem Regional Council and West Arnhem Regional Council have come together to strengthen collaboration and advocate for local and regional development. The Council's met to foster cooperation, share experiences and explore opportunities for mutual growth. They've also affirmed their support for the Yes campaign on the Indigenous Voice to Parliament. Now on the Local Government News Roundup. It's time for the International Spotlight. Starting today in New Zealand, where Auckland councillors are expressing their frustration and disappointment over a directive from the central government to a public housing organisation to investigate the development of new homes along a planned light rail corridor without consulting the council or the public. The letter from two government ministers urged the housing organisation to explore development options along the corridor. Newsroom.co.nz reports the councillors found out about the directive from a member of the public and they consider it undemocratic and a betrayal of trust. The council has resolved for Mayor Wayne Brown to contact the government and demand a seat at the decision table. In Canada, an entire council in southern Labrador has resigned over a dispute with a local business. CBC News reports on how the dispute has divided the community, according to the now former mayor of Red Bay, Lynn Stone. The issue centres on the management of a municipal wharf and a boat tour business that Ms Stone says has done much damage to the community. The business owner, Sheena Fowler, blames the town for an unfair agreement and says the town has bullied and harassed her since she started her business last May. All three members of the town council have stepped down and the provincial government is expected to call a municipal election for the town soon. To the US, a city in Florida will halt all new developments for one year due to concerns about water availability. The Council of Zephyr Hills, which is known for its bottled spring water, has been experiencing rapid growth that has outpaced its allotted water supply. The city is facing a potential water shortage within the next two years if proposed developments proceed. The current water limit was established in 2020 and was meant to last for 20 years. More on that story from WSF Public Media. Link in the show notes. And to the UK for our final stories today, in Surrey, England, residents of the town of Woking will be asked to provide input on which services should be prioritised as the local council faces bankruptcy. Woking Borough Council recently halted all non-essential spending as its debts were projected to reach £2.6 billion. The BBC reports that the council is currently undergoing a restructuring process to reduce its size and expenses. The council says the consultation on service cuts is part of its effort to demonstrate to the government that it is taking steps to reduce spending before requesting a bailout. And a new survey from England's local government association has found that forcing councillors to attend meetings in person has led to some of them quitting. The legal requirement to hold full council meetings in person was temporarily lifted during the pandemic but reintroduced in May 2021. The survey found that one in ten councils have seen members resign since then due to the change. 
the LGA warns that the recruitment and retention of councillors, particularly those with disabilities or other responsibilities, will be hindered if councils cannot hold hybrid meetings. It's supporting an amendment to legislation that would allow councils to meet virtually. The government is expected to respond to a consultation on remote council meetings soon. And that's your weekend update from the Local Government News Roundup recorded Saturday the 1st of July 2023. Welcome to the new financial year. If you find the podcast useful, we'd love it if you could leave a rating or a review on whatever app you listen to us on. You might also consider becoming a friend of the Roundup. Subscribers receive early access to special episodes, the entire back catalogue of the podcast and breaking news updates from time to time. You can find out more about that on our website at www.lgnewsroundup.com. The Roundup is recorded in the city of Greater Geelong, Victoria, on the land of the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation. I look forward to having you back with us soon for more local government news from Australia and around the world. Until then, thanks for listening and bye for now. Coming in March from the VLGA is the first 2024 session in the highly regarded Fast Track series, looking at the critical issue of leading under pressure. Fast Track is targeted professional development for mayors and councillors, dealing with the topical and timely issues of our time. Speakers and registration details will be announced soon. Get ready to fast track your way to the 2024 elections with the VLGA. (laughs) 